My tank is really doing pretty horribly. It's full on crashing. It really is a mess. Almost a chance to start over. At least my fish are doing well. My clownfish have been laying eggs about once every few weeks, couple weeks maybe. Then they guard them as the rest of the fish eye them for food. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and I wanted to take a moment to talk about what to do after things take a turn for the worse. Though I play a coral biologist on the internet, I'm an engineer by day. I work on mobile applications, and one thing that we always strive to do is ship the highest quality app that we possibly can to our users. That doesn't always happen. Engineers are people too. We make mistakes, we overlook important details, whatever they might be. So too in reef aquariums. When things are going well and almost everything is just humming along, I think we tend to get a bit lax. We let things slide that maybe we shouldn't. We don't test our water as much as we probably should. The tank's doing well after all. We'll notice it if anything starts to change. The problem is, is that things are always changing. You just can't always see them. No matter what you've been told, every moving part in your aquarium and every LED they will one day wear out and fail. Every LED diode gets a fraction of a less bright every day, every hour that it's on, in fact. The bearings in your fans that are cooling your lights and spinning your pumps, they get dusty. The motor has to spend more and more effort overcoming that friction. Plastic impellers wear out. The plastic coating on magnets gets damaged and they can corrode into the water. Things happen. In my tank, I got too comfortable and I let things run on autopilot a little too long. Now we see the effect of that, a full on tank crash. At this point, I'm honestly counting the coral that might survive all this rather than the coral that's not gonna make it. It's really depressing to look at. So as an engineer, what would I do? Let's say the app is crashing for millions of users out there. Well, we'd release a quick patch to fix it and stop it from crashing. In my aquarium, I found the corroding pump. I removed it from the system. I added copper and heavy metal absorbing resins to the water. And today I have a Triton ICP test that shows no copper or any of those heavy metals remaining in the water of my tank. So the app crash has stopped. We fixed it. Our users are happy. They're able to use the app again. But maybe under the covers, the code is just a lot more messy, but it works. Hooray. The next thing that an engineering team might do is call a meeting. We do like meetings after all. A meeting that might be titled as a retro or retrospective or maybe a root cause analysis. We will invite all the people involved in the crash, the person who originally wrote the code, the QA people who helped triage the crash, test the fix, the team lead or whoever signed off on the code, and of course, anyone involved in writing the fix for it. The goal of those meetings is not really to assign blame to someone. It's to figure out what exactly led up to that crash and then make it not happen again. So in my aquarium, there's no one involved other than myself. So what did I do or not do that led up to the crash? Well, I think it was my overly lax equipment maintenance habits. Had I been checking and cleaning those pumps more often, I'd have noticed the wear or maybe the small cracks developing in the plastic housing of that pump before the motor windings were fully exposed to the salt water. Okay, so now that we know exactly how the crash developed over time, how it came to be, what could I do to ensure that a similar crash won't happen again? Well, I'm building a new manifold to run the various reactors and by chiller, and it's all going to be under my sump. This is going to eliminate a few, several smaller pumps, making it impossible for them to cause issues because they're not in the sump anymore. The manifold will be run by a reflow pump, which runs externally to my sump. Having the pump external like that will make it easier to see if something catastrophic happens to it. It'll make it easier to do maintenance as well. All I have to do is turn off valves and disconnect two of these gargantuan two inch unions, and I'd be able to remove the pump to do whatever I need to do. Those kinds of pumps, external pumps, also cannot leak copper into the water. There simply is no way for water to contact anything like copper motor windings on these pumps. 
This does leave my return pump and the pump running my skimmer. Both of these were made by a company named Vertex, which is no longer around. They're sort of ticking time bombs at this point, and the pumps are as old as my tank is today, about six years old. I do need to address both of these pumps before they also invariably cause issues, though for now, they do seem to be fine. I, did, I checked everything. I do have plans maybe to buy a second reflow pump, use that as a return pump, and that'll eliminate that older Vertex pump, though I really do like it. So that would just leave my skimmer, but given the space I have to work with, I might just have to keep a close eye on it rather than replacing the whole skimmer or maybe the pump. Um, ideally, I could run one off my manifold instead and eliminate that pump altogether. I'm going to wait and see exactly how this manifold runs before planning out more changes to my return pump. I'll do one project at a time here. Uh, for example, I want to see how loud the pump is, for one. Reflow pumps do get high marks for reliability over years, and the company has been producing them basically unchanged, and I'm sure they would dispute that, <laughs> for as long as I've been in saltwater tanks now. So that would conclude the retrospective. The cause of this crash was my lax equipment maintenance routine. The fix to prevent it in the future is ensuring that there are just fewer pumps in number, that the ones that remain are more easily accessible, and they're easier to maintain so that I'll do it more often. I think you should do similar exercises on your own tanks, or really any time you have a major issue or change, and that could be good or bad. There's always something leading up to it. There's always something you can do to prevent or encourage that thing from happening in the future. So I hope that that helped you just sort of get into the mindset in that regard. Right now in my reef tank, the water phosphorus phosphate is off the chart. Now all living cells contain phosphorus and I'm having so many living cells just die. So I think that's probably the major source of it because I haven't added anything else. Once I have my manifold built, might be this week, I might hook up a GFO reactor just to help remove that excess phosphate from the water. So thanks for watching. Let me know down below in the comments if you would do something differently. It's my first time building a manifold. I know the reflow pump is a little bit overrated, but I'm curious for your feedback. Take a moment to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and have a fantastic day. Bye.